Okay, um, this is the final part of the multicollinearity chapter. So, we, uh, like so far, we have considered a perfect multicollinearity where there is a perfect a linear relationship. So, but however, in practice, even imperfect multicollinearity could could be a problem. So, uh, earlier I compared a perfect multicollinearity to uh, calculating a over b when b equals to zero. So when the denominator is zero, we could not calculate the, the fraction. So, uh, so that's that's basically what multicollinearity is doing. And imperfect multicollinearity can be compared to the case where we calculate a over b, but b is very, very close to zero. It is not exactly zero, but very close to zero, like 0 0.000001. So it's like in mathematics, we learned that a over b can be calculated whenever b is not zero. So as long as b is slightly different from zero, a over b does exist and uh, there is no issue, like in theory. However, in like say in a uh, software, when you try to calculate a over b, where b is a very, very small number, then, then the result will be a very large number. We will think about this problem. Is it okay or not? So first, the first problem you can think about is that the result may be a very big number, huge number, so a over b, because b is really, really small, a over b could be a huge number, and in some cases, uh, there could be a memory problem, or some the algorithm to calculate the, the, the fraction could be, could return an error because the number becomes too large. That's one possibility. And another problem is that even if you do get the, the result, but still another problem remains uh, that a small error, even a very small error in A in the numerator could result in a big error in A over B. So think about a small error in A. It is amplified when you divide by divided by a small number, right? So as a result, a small error in A could be a huge difference in the result. So uh, statistically, you can think it as the case when you have a very large standard errors. Conceptually, I'm just explaining this in uh, just uh, roughly and just intuitively. And so similar thing happens in regression when you have imperfect multicollinearity. So earlier I told you that the multicollinearity happens when uh, the correlation between x and x2 is plus or minus 1. So when the correlation equals to plus minus 1, then it is a theoretical multicollinearity, perfect multicollinearity. There is nothing you can do. So x1 and x2 are basically the same variable. But so it's okay, but in theory, and in theory, as long as the correlation is different from one, then you are fine, in theory. But in practice, as I said, uh, it's not okay. In practice, imperfect multicollinearity could be a problem, for example, when the correlation coefficient is very close to one, but, uh, but not exactly one. And not exactly one, so theoretically not a problem, but computationally, it could be a big problem, or the result may have a problem. So then how close is, how close is uh, too close? There is no clear answer. Uh, first, it depends on your sample size. So, so if as the correlation coefficient approaches to converges to one, your estimator will have a bigger problem. So the closer to one, 
the bigger problem your estimator will have. And if you have huge sample size, which can uh, compensate the, the, the inaccuracy caused by the multicollinearity, then this could be not a problem. So, however, if your sample size is not uh, huge, then uh, like the inaccuracy caused by uh, like this correlation could be critical in the uh, like because uh, your uh, your sample size underlying information is not enough. So, imperfect multicollinearity is more about computational problem. So there is no clear theoretical uh, judgment whether it is a multicollinearity or not. And to continue, uh, so let me give you the intuition. So the multicollinearity could be understood as uh, the lack of ceteris paribus variation. So uh, it happens the multicollinearity problem arises when a regressor does not have a variation when the other regressors are held fixed. So you fix some regressors and another regressor is also determined. In this case, these guys are multicollinear. However, uh, so in, in this case, there is no variation at all. There is no ceteris paribus variation at all. But imperfect multicollinearity uh, is the case when you have little variation too little. So there may be some variation, but the vari variation is too small to have a reasonably uh, reliable results. So that is the intuition behind imperfect multicollinearity. Then you need to understand, you need to first understand the importance of the variation, which I explained earlier. Do you remember? I, I, I explained with a graph with different uh, base, wider base makes the slope more stable. So, or mathematically, the standard error of the coefficient OLS estimator is inversely proportional to the variance of x. This was another uh, one of the results we uh, learned earlier. And this means if there is more variation in the regressor, then the standard standard error will be small, which means the estimator is more accurate. So the smaller the standard error is, the more accurate the estimator is. That, therefore, if there is an imperfect multicollinearity, then one of the regressors has small variation, small ceteris paribus variation. So because of the small variation, the standard error will be huge, which means inaccuracy, which means the estimator is inaccurate. So the small variation inflates uh, the coefficients standard error. This is, this is the, the critical problem actually, because if the standard error is too large, you cannot get any conclusion from the results. So like uh, it is unreliable, so it is, you can think the estimator is simply an error. So therefore, uh, so then he, this tells you, so there is no clear uh, threshold how much is a problem or how much is okay, but the judgment must be made based on the standard errors. You may want smaller, you, you want, of course, every, everyone wants to have a small standard error, which means uh, better accuracy. But if you think your estimators do not have uh, reasonable standard errors, then think about multicollinearity problem. The standard error could be inflated because of a multicollinear problem. And if that is true, if that's the case, and then add and then remember the multicollinearity problem could be resolved if you drop one of the variables. So when you drop some of the variable, uh, some of the variables, and if the standard errors uh, drop drastically, then then you can see that uh, it was because of some multicollinearity 
among those variables and by dropping one you are uh, uh, the, the problem the, the problem in the satiris previous variation was fixed so this is how we uh, detect the multicollinearity problem and what you may what you may encounter in your uh, analysis like later so keep this in mind it will be a useful tip um, when you have similar problems okay I will call this uh, lecture uh, from the next like uh, in the next lecture we are heading into a different chapter so we will talk about control variables uh, which is a kind of regressor which is which is just a, a regressor but it plays a different role so it is a totally different topic so I'm going to uh, do uh, we are going to enter into the different topic in the next lecture so see you later bye